I've been so privileged to be a part of seeing people's lives transformed. Allie Diaz has been a teacher for 30 years. What stood out about her time at Highlands Community Charter and Technical School was the students. It's a lot of newly arrived immigrants. It was very amazing for me to learn in this age. <laughs> Students tell us the school truly helped them adjust and succeed in the U.S. It was meeting a need in the community that wasn't being met. But as time went on, Allie felt the school's priorities shifting. She says leadership became obsessed with her class's average daily attendance, known as ADA. ADA is money, just money, money, money. It's the number that determines where your tax dollars go. And this is for all public schools. It's you know how we get our money, how many um, butts and seats, so to speak. We spoke with over 30 current and former Highlands employees, both on and off camera for over a year. Fearing retaliation, some of them asked us not to disclose their identities. For the 2022-2023 school year, California taxpayers gave Highlands $136 million for attendance. To get there, staffers say the school's leaders relied in part on promotional gimmicks shown in recordings of staff meetings that ABC10 was provided. A lot of, like, raffles and things for students who attend. Every day that your student attends class, um, it will earn towards them earning uh, fantastic prices and also entering the grand prize, which is uh, $500 value. While we don't know exactly where those funds came from, the school's leaders knew that raffles could be a legal problem. A government audit found Highlands potentially violated the California Constitution by raffling off laptops, gift cards, and big screen TVs. Prizes all bought with your tax dollars, according to the audit, and used to encourage attendance. And it seems to have helped. Highlands has 50 plus sites with over 14,700 students, making it bigger than 12 of California's state universities. But it was more than raffles. According to employees we spoke with, Highlands also engaged in inflating attendance numbers. I was being given lists of students, sometimes 20 to 30 a week, new students, all the time, adding to my roster and adding to my class, and then a lot of them wouldn't attend. I never had met them. 20 Highlands employees told us leadership pressured teachers to boost attendance reports, more ADA, more tax dollars for the school. I don't want to put my credential at risk certifying something that I can't verify. She even put that in writing. In an email to her supervisor, Dia says, I have never met the students and haven't seen their work and I just kept pushing back. Other teachers were facing the same experiences, but just because they were being harassed so much, they started just signing it. She says she even brought this concern in person to the school's current top leader, Doc Smith. I've never heard that ever. I, I, I take offense to it. How are you ensuring that those attendance records are accurate? Because at the end of the day, you're getting ADA and those are taxpayer dollars. So this is important to anyone watching. Uh, I, hey, including me, I pay taxes. And that's what I'm saying. That's why we are a tenant system. We default to absent. If I was that compelled to say, let's falsify it, the easiest way in the world would be to reverse it like every other school district does. So really, ultimately it's up to the teachers, it sounds like. In, it is up to the teachers. No, it is, it is only up to the teacher. Mm -hmm. so, so put simply, would you say that Highlands prioritizes attendance over all else? Uh, absolutely not. We prioritize our students. Teachers told us they're concerned students haven't received the education tax dollars are paying for. So do you feel that the quality of education was sacrificed for money? Oh, definitely. 100%. L.K. Damison is another Highlands teacher who says she refused to alter attendance records. When COVID hit, she says Doc Smith pushed teachers to contact students. Wait, so you're supposed to call 110 students every day? Yeah. With any connection, 
they would basically be present. A quick texter call, she says, would be the equivalent of a student being present in class. So if you spoke with them in some manner, then you can mark them, mark them present. The stress over hitting attendance numbers compounded the stress of the pandemic itself. I decided, okay, I can't do this anymore. Um, I'm going to send an email to all the staff and the leadership saying that we need need to slow down so that we can give the best to our teach to our students. Within an hour and a half of sending what she describes as a respectful email, she says her work email was disabled, cut off from her students and colleagues. I texted seven people in the leadership. I got no response. I realized I'm fired. That's it. They fired me. She was not fired. Two weeks later, she says she received her next paycheck, but was still in the dark. Finally, she says Doc Smith called her. After the isolation, she says he demanded control. For the reason that you send an email, we had to cut you off. Every time you want to express an opinion, you need to come to me and I will allow it or not. One teacher we spoke with said when she voiced concerns in an email to leadership about being overwhelmed, um, she was cut off from communication for weeks. I'm not sure what you're talking about right now. I can certainly make our legal counsel available. Smith tells his employees he welcomes their input. We have an open door policy. I want you to know you can exercise that and there's no type of retaliation or anything like that. Yet a current class action lawsuit accused Highlands of retaliating against whistleblowers, alleging Highlands reduced an employee's hours and eventually fired her after she voiced concern about discrimination. Staff members we spoke with came to see the open door as a trap. Anytime anyone voiced an opinion or some pushback, that person would usually just disappear. I've never worked anywhere where it is expected that you do not say anything that can even be seen as negative. But the proof is in the pudding that people are fired. That threat looms over all of our heads. Multiple lawsuits filed against Highlands describe accounts of harassment, discrimination, and retaliation. And complaints to the California Labor Commission allege that Highlands failed to pay employees wages and expenses. One lawsuit that was settled alleged Doc Smith told an employee to adjust his attitude, threatened to fire him, and used a misogynist slur against him. What do you have to say about these claims? Not knowing what you're talking about in regards to cases or specificity. Would you tell an employee to adjust their attitude or stop being a p if they came to you no, with a concern? No. I can guarantee that never happened. Yeah, What's yeah, up, my I'm brother? He was adamant doing, that Highlands is not a toxic place to work. Well, there's a the real boss right there. How are you? We respect our staff. The reality is it's vindictive to say that. I do know that many, many of those staff members you talked to were no longer working at Highlands. I mean, we have spoken with people who do currently I, work I here you, as well. That. Yeah, many of those people also voiced concerns. During our interview, Doc Smith kept wanting to focus on the former employees. First of all, many ex-employees. Um, and current, and current you, employees. Some, some, right? But if you have, look, if you have 600 employees, you're going to have a couple that aren't loving you. Ms. Dipshika, how are you? Good, how are you doing? Yet, if you go to Highlands, you'll hear lots of love for Smith. Okay, I got a joke for you. I got a joke for you. Do you know why the melons, you know why they never got married? Because they can't elope? <laughs> I know, dad joke. But staffers told us it's all a way to protect their jobs. We have to praise him. We have to talk how amazing Highlands is. It's almost an unspoken rule that during Zoom meetings, uh, all staff meetings, you type in the chat how grateful you are. Thank you, Doc. Thank you, boss. Thank you, Doc. I also... Um... So grateful for Doc and his leadership. A huge shout out to Highlands and our leadership. Doc 
and Natasha. I want to thank you both from the bottom of my heart. He's just got all these people like nodding and saying yes, and that's a great idea, and, and they don't question him. Employees say Smith created a culture of favoritism. Those who give praise get on leadership's good side. The ones that were dog's buddies and who dog liked, they were sent to good sites and they got into leaderships very quickly. While some employees told us they love working at Highlands, others described it as cult-like, toxic, full of favoritism. We asked Smith about it. We have over a 96% retention rate. We call it the golden handcuffs at Highlands. <laughs> Dozens of employees told us they stay because of the students and how much Highlands pays, not the work environment. So a lot of people, they turn a blind eye. I, I don't know what they mean by that, but I can tell you the fact that we care about our staff. Ready? Yep. One former Highlands administrator agreed to go on camera as long as we protected their identity. Yeah, so there are um, many ways there's toxicity. This administrator worked alongside Smith and agreed to share their knowledge of Highlands inner workings, including the strategy to boost attendance numbers and revenue. Their language wouldn't be go commit fraud, but it was you need to keep these numbers. No matter what it takes. I mean, they, they didn't say that exactly, but that definitely was the message. During their time at Highlands, this administrator estimates only 30 to 40 percent of students reported as attending class were actually there. While we weren't able to independently confirm that estimate, other sources questioned Highlands attendance records. As for teachers who refused to boost attendance numbers. They would be labeled as someone who doesn't work well with people. A path to no promotions, the administrator says. Meanwhile, some climb the ladder based on their connections. Well, you look a lot like somebody else that works here. Do you, do you know anybody Do else I? Like work here? <laughs> okay. He's my sister, yes. Pretty sister. Bad. If you're, I'll tell you what, if you're half as good as... We got a good one when we got you, I'll tell you that. Oh, man. All right. There are many family members and friends who are hired. That's how they hire. The administrator said a board member's daughter was hired for a leadership position despite not having any education credentials or a bachelor's degree. This person makes nearly $200,000 in salary and benefits. And she's just one example. Based on accounts from sources we spoke with, we found at least 106 Highlands employees are related, 40 with parent-child relationships, 48 are siblings, cousins, or another relation, 18 married or dating. One of those employees is Doc Smith's own son. But I don't think that's a bad thing. If he wasn't a good employee, I'd fire him. Would you say that Highlands has a problem with nepotism? No. Do we hire the right person for the job? Yes. I like you. I mean, you, you want to come here and slit my throat, whatever you want to do, I don't care. I mean, I care, but I want you to have the truth. Our on-camera interview stretched for nearly two hours. He denied most of the allegations against Highlands, though he did admit that he hired an employee for his front desk and then hired her family. If that's nepotism by definition, but not by productivity, they are Amazing. No one, no one's supervising their family. That's what the law says. Sources we spoke with question this, saying family members were in the same reporting chain. Related or not, sources criticize other close connections happening at Highlands. How things were handled was so contingent upon your relationship with leadership. Many staffers told us if they were not on leadership's good side, they felt boxed in. Highlands has no mechanism for employees to report problems confidentially. If you write an email to the HR email, Doc is on that. Are you on the emails that HR receives? Yes. It's not just HR issues. Smith told us he gets copies of all emails between groups of his employees. Uh, because when I took over, um, it, it's hard to get information, right? Because especially as you grow. 95% I just do, delete, delete. But there's some, oh, there's a need. How come we're not addressing it? And so who do I complain to? I can't complain to HR because he will receive the email 
I can't complain to the board because their kids work here. It's absurd that it's had to come to this, to going to the media, when people have been trying for about a decade to get attention about what's really happening. After Smith became aware of our reporting, he made his expectations explicit. He repeatedly told staff that they have, quote, a duty of loyalty to Highlands. All employees' loyalty is due to the company of which they work. After our interview with Smith, three weeks before we aired our investigation, Smith addressed our report in an all-staff meeting. Yeah, you may or may not watch Channel 10, but they're going to do a report on Highlands. It's probably not going to look good. It's a bunch of bull. The way they made you feel that they knew everybody and kind of controlled everything definitely made me fearful for six to eight months. I was considered severely depressed. Oh, it's been really, really hard on my mental health. I left Highlands before I knew what my next career move was going to be. I took a job that paid $20,000 less just to get out. 